Welcome to The Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Atia. If you like this video, please let me know by subscribing to the channel or visiting my website to become a member for more exclusive content. And so is one interpretation of the fact that um, PCSK9 inhibitors can lower LP little a by 30%, but that might not be sufficient to ameliorate the LP little a risk specifically, is that it's just simply not enough. It gets back to what you said earlier. Yeah. It, you're going to have to eliminate LP little a, and, and it becomes a bit more of a step function than the gradient we see with ApoB. Yeah, I, I don't know if we need to eliminate LP little a, but we need to take we a need higher to get it LP probably level below and bring it down yeah, yeah, yeah. to a lower level. So that brings and that's us, what they're testing. Yeah, so that, that brings what, us to where we are today, <laughs> right? So what's the state of the yeah. art today in 2022 with my patients who have elevated LP little a, I take a two, two prong effect uh, when it comes to lipid management. Obviously there's many things we're doing outside of lipid management. The first is absolutely eradicating ApoB. So we're very aggressive on this because it's very clear that you can do this safely and effectively. We target an ApoB of about 30 to 40 milligrams per deciliter. So we target an ApoB at what we would call a physiologic level. So the level that a child would have. It's yeah. clear that a child can have an ApoB of 30 and have no problems with development, which is the most cholesterol demanding period of their life. So there's absolutely no reason that we shouldn't be able to take an adult there um, without side effects, uh, meaning provided we can do it without side effects from the medications. But the second thing we do is we're very liberal in the use of PCSK9 inhibitors because even though we don't know the answer yet, our belief is even if it whacks at 30%, which is about what we see, we see on average about a 30% reduction in LP little a, it's worth it until we get to antisense oligonucleotides. So let's yeah. talk about antisense oligonucleotides. What are they? Yeah. Now, I'll, before we get into that, uh, I'll tell you that I do the same thing. I mean, uh, I'm going to turn uh, 40 this year, so I decide I decided to had to have a, a lipid check and have my LPA remeasured and it's very high. It's at 200 nanomolars. I knew that because I had my genotype done with uh, a direct to consumer uh, company and, and they l let you look at your own data. So they, they send you uh, all of your SNP information. So I went and looked at my favorite SNP uh, in LPA and I was uh, a carrier of one of the most famous mutation uh, variants in, uh, in LPA. So, and that's exactly what I decided decided to do. So my LDL was a bit higher than than average. My LPA was high. So I just started to uh, to take a statin. And of course, I, I've been on a close to vegetarian diet diet for more than three years. I act, I'm physically active. But you know, at some point, you have to look at at your at your labs and say, well, there's I need to do more. So, so even I started uh, taking a statin, even though I'm not 40 yet, because I, I, I see those studies and I see the importance of going after LDL very early and very aggressively. Now, I'm not on a super high dose. I need to have it to, to check it after three months. But um, but if it doesn't go down, I'll increase the dose. So so and that's I think what uh, people who have high LPA uh, should do. 